Hello, my name is Will, and welcome to another Rudiment of the Week. Rudiment of the Week. This week, we're diving in to double strokes. The double stroke roll is an absolute game changer. I really remember learning to play this rudiment. And once I had it down comfortably and confidently, it totally changed the way that I sound on the drums. Now, like the single stroke roll, it's a fairly straightforward pattern to learn. And once you have it down, it sounds great played by itself, particularly when you play it faster. However, the secret to the double stroke roll is that once you do have it down, it actually unlocks all these other rudiments that you can also start to play and they will transform your playing. So today, we're gonna to start off by learning the double stroke roll in its simplest and purest and loveliest form, initially just by itself. But then once we have that, we're gonna add in some more ideas, some more layers to challenge ourselves a little bit further. Grab yourself a cloak, a walking stick, and a map to Mordor. We're going on a journey. So the pattern's quite straightforward. It's literally just two hits on each hand. So you play right, right, left, left. Right, right, left, left. That's it, that's the whole pattern. But what we have to make sure is everything is nice and even. That's what we're really focusing on. So what we don't wanna have is kind of a right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. We wanna keep things as even as possible on that right, right, left, left. So you're gonna to wanna to have to do this quite a lot. Start off slow and then try faster tempos as you feel more comfortable. The great thing about rudiments is that you can practice them anywhere. So that pattern of right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, feel free just to kind of tap out on your legs or perhaps on a pillow. You don't have to be by a drum kit to practice this pattern, but you want to practice the pattern as much as possible. So really work on getting that down so that you can, you know, almost like watch TV and not even have to think whilst you're doing it. Keep practicing it as much as possible and the speed will come. One exercise that you can try to help you keep your doubles more even is actually to play them against single strokes. So what I want you to try is to try and do eight hits on single strokes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then play eight hits across double strokes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you're just gonna go between those two rudiments, but you're gonna try and make them all sound exactly the same. So it should sound something like this. And a little bit faster. Once you can do that, try and see if you can then play four of each. So four single strokes, right, left, right, left, followed by four strokes across the doubles, which will be two doubles, right, right, left, left. So it's one, two, three, four, followed by one, two, three, four. And once, if you have that down, I wanna change the way we count that. I wanna start feeling this in 16th notes if we can. So that'll be one, E, and, uh. Then to our doubles, two, E, and, uh. Back to our singles, three, E, and, uh. And then to our doubles, four, E, and, uh. Keep looping that round until you feel comfortable.
Once you're there with that one, we're going to see if we can put both of the ideas together. So you play through your eights and then go straight into playing into your groups of four. So if we can, we're going to try and do our eights once, which will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight doubles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then with your fours, you're going to try and see if you can do four beats in total. So one, two, three, four. Then your doubles. One, two, three, four. Singles again. One, two, three, four and then your doubles, one, two, three, four. And if you can, try and see if you can fill all of these as 16th notes. So it would feel like this, one E and a, uh, two E and doubles, then E and a, uh, four E, now the fours, one E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. Bit faster. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. When you're starting to feel comfortable playing those double strokes, you're going to want to see if you can bring in some more elements to make things a bit more challenging and really start to embed them into your playing. So to begin with, we're going to see if we can put a quarter note pulse with our feet underneath our double strokes. So we're going back to just playing doubles, so just right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, constantly, but our bass drum is going to play quarter notes. So that means if we're playing one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a with our hands, every time we say or think one, two, three or four, we're going to play the bass drum at the same time. So it should sound something like this. One, two, three, four. Same thing with the left foot. One, two, three, four. Once you've got that down, I actually want to pull up one of those ideas that we had in the pad earlier. We're going to try the one beat of each, the four singles followed by two doubles. We're going to play that continuously but then see if we can put our quarter note pulse underneath it. First with our right foot and then with our left foot. Should sound something like this. One, two, three, four. Same with the left foot. Now when you added in the feet underneath that pattern, you may find that you've discovered this new feeling where you want to pick up your drum kit, put it in the back of a truck, drive it down the road to a river, throw the drum kit in the river because oh my god why is it so hard to do the feet at the same time? If you're feeling that way, do not worry. I always tend to find that when I start to play patterns on my feet underneath different patterns with my hands, it goes wrong. And not the first time, not the first 10 times, but like the first 100, maybe even a thousand times. It can go wrong. It's not an easy thing. It's not quite like learning a pattern when you're just playing it between two limbs. We're including other limbs now. All you have to do is just take your time. If it doesn't work in the first three goes, do not give up. You're going to have that sense of like, nah, screw it, throw it in the river. I don't need it. But if you stick with it, just spend a little bit more time than normal. I'm talking like one game of FIFA sort of period of time playing the pattern. It will come a lot easier. My top tip in breaking this one down is that your mind is going to struggle going between the two patterns while keeping the same pattern with the feet. 
So you have to actually just really kind of almost program it like a computer and take your time. So play the kick drum with the four single strokes. Stop. And then play the kick drum with the double strokes. Singles. Doubles. And play it with a gap. But then once you have that, you can then start to push them together more closely. Take your time and give it some time and I promise you'll get there. Okay, so I wanna take that chord to note pattern that we've been playing and just put it on this imaginary shelf that I just built on my mind. I'm gonna keep it there, keep an eye on it for me just there. We'll come back to it in a moment. And that's just gonna leave us just with that pattern, that right, left, right, left, right, right, left, left. And actually, that sounds quite cool if you start to move it around in different places. Watch what happens if I just perhaps move my right hand onto the toms. So I go from this to this. works quite well as a 16th note drum fill. So if I play that pattern through twice, I'm gonna play. I've got myself a new drum fill. Now if you can do that, I want to challenge you a little bit further and I want to see if you can put the single strokes on the cymbals rather than on the rack tom. So our left hand is actually going to stay where it is, but rather than playing tom, snare, tom, snare, I now want you to see if you can put your right hand on a cymbal and put the bass drum underneath that cymbal. Not the bass drum from the shelf that's staying there, we'll come back to those court notes in a minute, You, we'll get there, we'll get there. But with your right hand, just try and see if you can play the single strokes between, for example, the ride and the snare. Then the doubles are gonna be the same between the floor and the snare. So it sounds something like this. I'll loop it a couple of times, showing you on the ride symbol to begin with, but then I'm actually gonna just start to move my right hand around and see what other sounds I can come up with. Once I've got that down, maybe I'll let the right hand move around from the doubles as well. The next challenge for you is to see if we can add the bass drum in the doubles as well. So this time, right hand is gonna stay all in the cymbal for the whole pattern, but I'm gonna put a bass drum with all of the right hands. So I'm gonna have right, left, right, left, right, right, left, left. Give it a go. Quite cool. Yep, 
your final challenge is to return to the imaginary shelf and see if we can bring that quarter note pulse not for our right foot but for our left and can you keep a one two three four pulse with your left foot underneath that pattern with your right hand left hand and right foot so now it's all the limbs working all at once let's give it a go one two three four If you can do that, first of all, congratulations, that is not a very easy thing to do. But what, what's this? Oh, it's an imaginary draw. And there's a secret upbeat left foot pulse to play as well. So now, instead of playing quarter notes and the downbeats of one, two, three, four, can you play it with an upbeat pulse of one, and two, and three, and four, and one. That last one is pretty tricky, so if you can play that one, congratulations, because we've worked on so many things. Look how far we've come today. We started off just those double stroke pattern at the beginning, and now we're using all four limbs. We're going between singles and doubles. We're improving our vocabulary. If you can play everything in this video, I told you we're going on a journey. You are basically Gandalf. I you shall pass. You shall pass. At the same time, if you haven't been able to play everything in this video just yet, do not worry. There's so many things that we've covered and if you've had to pause this video at some point to go away and practice, then that is great. I would not expect you to be able to play through this whole thing straight away, particularly if you are a beginner at the drums. There is so many things going on, particularly in those last exercises where we're using all four limbs. So if you can't play it just yet, don't worry. This video isn't going anywhere, but your drumming definitely is. Am I right? <laughs> Keep working on the exercises and I promise your double strokes and your single strokes will start to combine in no time at all. Rudiment of the week this week's kind of been double strokes with a little bit of single strokes and a bit of independence. So there's been a lot going on, but I really hope you got something from it. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more drum lessons just like this one. My name's Will and I'll see you again soon.